please remain standing as you are able for the reading of the gospel today coming from the book uh, in the gospel of Matthew. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's troubles is enough for today. Come to me, all that you are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much. Once again, it's good to see everybody here today. And I think I've worn my mic out finally, so I gotta use this one. Do you mind? Very good. And uh, if you're new here, my name is Charlie Reeb. I'm the senior pastor of this great church. And once again, we're glad you're here because you had options today. A lot of different options, but you chose to be here. And I believe you're going to be blessed because of that decision. So thanks again. It's great to be in worship together. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we are grateful for your presence We have already sensed it in the majestic music and the profound prayers, the fellowship, and also the quiet meditation in this sacred place. And now, Lord, you have given me the privilege, the honor, and the opportunity to preach your word to these, my friends, and your servants, a task, Lord, that I cannot do on my own power. We know your spirit is in this place, so Lord, may it fall upon me, may it fall upon all of us as I preach and we all hear, seeking a word from you that will make a difference to our lives. It's in Christ's name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Very good. How many of you uh, took a vacation this summer? How many of you travel light? I'm reminded of a time a few years back when I was in the Tampa airport. I had just come back from Atlanta. I was visiting family and and friends and came back, and I was waiting for my baggage to come out of baggage claim on that belt. And I was amused because I watched a young couple interact. The husband, he was, you know, he had a carry-on on his shoulder. That's all he had, and he was frustrated. He was shifting his weight like this because he was waiting for his wife's luggage. Then I chuckled as I saw three big suitcases come out of the belt while this dutiful husband picked all three of them up, put them on a luggage cart. Well, he must have seen me grin because when he looked at me and they rolled away, he goes, three days. (laughs) Three days. We were in Atlanta, three days. And she took all of this and she slapped him playfully and said, oh, come on. It's not that bad, I don't know what to wear, and so I bring all this stuff. The husband wasn't amused. I don't know if any of you can relate to that. We have a a tendency to carry a lot of stuff with us sometimes, don't we? I'm reminded of this whenever we move. What's the most common question and complaint whenever we move? How did I accumulate so much stuff? I mean, the last time I moved, I said to myself, does my stuff just reproduce and give birth? It just keeps multiplying and multiplying. Some of us can't help it. I have a colleague who has a, a wife who's a flight attendant. And of course, you can imagine that job. You come across all kinds of interesting personalities. When people fly, they do crazy things. And one day, she was on a plane getting people ready to, to go off on a trip and People were putting their baggage in the, in the overhead bin, and there was this very difficult guy, irritable, and he was trying to put his suitcase into the bin, and it didn't fit. It didn't meet the parameters of putting on a plane, but there's always that one personality, isn't there? I mean, they try to put a lamp and then a, a mattress up there and try to fit it in, and it won't go. Just sit down, you know? So anyway, he was trying to do it. He was pushing it, pushing it. It wouldn't work, and finally the flight attendant said, sir, you're going to have to check that bag. And he got mad and said, 
well, when I fly another airline, I never have this problem. And she looked at him and said, sir, when you fly another airline, I don't have this problem either. <laughs> Good for her. Good for her. Carrying a lot of baggage can create a lot of problems. And today I'm not just talking about suitcases and stuff. I'm talking about emotional baggage, spiritual baggage. We have a tendency to carry this stuff and it weighs us down and it steals our joy, it steals our peace. And maybe today you've brought in some baggage in your life, heavy baggage. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's guilt, anger, anxiety, fear, shame, pride, prejudice. I don't know, but I know we have a tendency to carry a lot of baggage and it's hard to enjoy life. It's hard to have the peace of God. It's hard to experience the abundant life when we're carrying around, when we're lugging around heavy, heavy baggage. Can you imagine how it would feel if you didn't carry that baggage anymore? Can you imagine how freeing it would be no longer lugging around this baggage? Well, this morning, I'm going to show you how to let it go. That's right. In this message, I'm going to show you how to let all that stuff go so you can be liberated in your life. Now, I know some of you are skeptical. You're thinking, really, Char Charlie, in one little sermon, you're going to teach us to do that? Yeah, that's what I said. If you apply this message today, you can walk out of here free of that baggage in your life, completely free of it. Imagine the joy. Some of us just can't help but do it, though. Every day we wake up, and it's a habit. Some of us think, well, i got to keep worrying and worrying and worrying about my kids every single day, all the time, weighing and worrying, because if I don't worry, then I won't be prepared for what might happen. Other people say, you know, i got to wake up every day remembering that awful thing that loved one said to me or did to me, and I'm going to remain bitter, and I'm going to keep my guard up with my friends, with my coworkers. I'm not going to let them get close. Never, 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 because I do not want that to happen again. Of course, some of us, we wake up each day and we think of that awful thing we did years ago and we still feel the shame and we keep feeling it and we keep feeling it. I have to keep feeling it. I have to keep feeling it. So maybe one day I will feel that I earned forgiveness and mercy. It's tough. This stuff weighs us down. And not only affects us, but it also affects our relationships. Can you imagine what your relationships go through because of all the heavy baggage that you, that we carry around? Not too long ago, I read about an interesting drama that was on stage of a, of a wedding ceremony. And it had a bride and groom, and the whole point of it is that you could overhear what they were thinking as they were getting married. Can you imagine that? So first the groom appears. And he is so handsome in his tuxedo. He really is. But he walks in, and he's carrying all this luggage. He's got a strap over his left shoulder, a strap over his right shoulder. He's got this thing hanging around his neck, this big, big bag. And he's lugging another piece of luggage, and they each have labels on them. One says pride. Another says fear. Another says shame. Another says guilt. And you overhear him saying, oh, finally I've met the right woman who can help me carry all my burdens. She's going to be strong. She's going to be stable. Then the bride appears in a beautiful gown. And she's carrying a lot of luggage. One around her neck, one around her left shoulder, one around her right shoulder. And she's lugging this luggage cart. And each one of those are labeled. Prejudice, pride, shame. And she's thinking this. Oh, in just a moment, all my disappointments will go away. In just a moment, no more counseling, no more group sessions, no more heartache. I have found a man who's going to fix me. Poor thing. And then the pastor looks down at them and says, 
You may kiss your bride, but they can't kiss because of all the baggage. They try, but you can't embrace someone when you have all this baggage, when you have all this stuff, when you're holding on to all this stuff that weighs you down. Oh yeah, we do, we do it. We carry around baggage and it, it, it affects us, it, it affects the people around us. So the question I have this morning, isn't it time we just let it go? Isn't it time? I heard about a guy who always said he was an if only person, if only this, if only this. Well, today is the day when you do it. You just let it go. So I'm gonna teach you how to do it. Here we go. You ready? That's what I have prepared, so you better be ready. I'm gonna teach us how to let this baggage go by lifting up two very profound verses of scripture and one of our most favorite passages, the 23rd Psalm. And specifically, I want to lift up verse 3 that says, He restores my soul. Can you say that? He restores my soul. Say it again. He restores my soul. Now remember, David wrote this psalm, and he was a shepherd. And he wrote this psalm out of his experience as a shepherd. So why do sheep need to be restored? Well, they do. You may not know this. Not a lot of sheep around here. But they get tired, so tired that they fall over and they can't get back up by themselves. Why? Because their wool is too heavy. Their wool weighs them down. The rain and the wetness and the mud mats it down and it gets so heavy they can't stand up. And so the shepherd must come and guess what? Shear the sheep. Now sheep don't like to be sheared. And I can tell you from experience that's true out of doing three million stewardship campaigns. <laughs> but that's another sermon. It's coming. But it's true, they get weighed down and they need to be sheared, but what happens? What happens when they finally get sheared? They, they are thrilled, they are light, they, they feel free, they can run around and be free to follow the shepherd. And folks, this is exactly what God wants to do in your life. He wants to free you of all that stuff. He wants to, he wants to shear you of all the things that are weighing you down so you can have peace, so you can have abundant life. Jesus says this, come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you what? Rest. Not come to me and I'll give you guilt. Come to me and I'll give you shame. Come to me and I'll give you theology you don't understand. Come to me and I will give you rest. So here's the message for today. It's pretty simple but powerful. If you apply it, you can be free. Here it is. Letting go of your baggage means trusting God with burdens you're not supposed to carry. Let me say that again. Letting go of your baggage means trusting God with burdens you're not supposed to carry. You see, that's the whole point, isn't it? We think we have to carry it. I have to carry this because it's my job. I have to carry this because it's my duty. I have to carry this because I'm obligated. I have to carry this because my mother was the, you know, a great agent for guilt trips. I got to carry it. I got to carry it. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you have to carry it. In fact, the Bible says the exact opposite. It says, cast your cares on the Lord. Why? Not only because God wants you to be at peace, but also because God wants to use you. And God can't use us when we spend all of our energy carrying around, lugging around this baggage. So how do we do it? Well, this leads me to the second verse of the 23rd Psalm I want to lift up. And for some of you, you really need to listen to this. He leads me beside still waters. Can you say that? He leads me beside still waters. Say it again. He leads me beside still waters. The truth is, God cannot lead us until we are still. 
Now, I know some personalities. I know none of you are in here that are like this, but I see them a lot in Johns Creek running around, and their badge of honor is this. Oh, I'm just busy, 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 busy. I don't have time for I'm just so busy. Look at me. I'm busy, busy, busy. I'm about to burn out, but don't I look good? And I had a pastor colleague have a personality like that in his church, and she was always busy. Oh, my gosh, I'm busy. Oh, my gosh, I'm busy. Oh, my gosh, I'm busy. And this pastor had a tendency to just speak the truth, whatever he thought. Dangerous sometimes when you're a pastor, but that's what he did. He looked at her and said this. How do you expect God to get a hold of you if you don't stand still? Why do you think we worship? Why do you think we make time for this? To stand still so God can get a hold of us and lead us. Some of you need to ponder that question. How can God get a hold of you if you don't stand still? Because that's the only way God's going to lead us and lead you. Now, twice in the 23rd Psalm, it says God leads us. And what that means is it doesn't mean God is behind us saying, you go. It means God is in front of us saying, come, I see the path, and I'll tell you if there's a rock, you step up. If there's a path that goes down, you step down. If you need to go up, you go up. You see, God gives us what we need when we need it. The Bible says as much. In Hebrews, we will find grace to help us when we need it. Can you say that with me? When we need it. Say it again. When we need it. Max Lucado compares this verse to the time when he used to take his kids on trips, plane trips. And, of course, he was wise enough not to give his little kids the plane tickets way before the plane took off. So this is what he would do. He had a routine. When uh, the plane was ready to go, about to board the plane, he would keep the tickets in a little bag, and he would stand between his kids and the ticket agent and hand the kids a ticket. And they would, in turn, hand the agent a ticket. He gave them the ticket exactly when they needed it. And let me tell you, folks, as sure as I stand here, as sure as I preach here, I will tell you, that's how God operates. That's how he leads us. He stands between us and our need. And when we need it, at the right time, he provides it. And let me tell you, that is so liberating for me. I can let go of my worries. I can let go of my fears because I know God is guiding me and he's leading me. And when I need the wisdom at the right time, he'll give it to me. When I need that particular resource at the right time, he'll give it to me. At the right time. Jesus says this in Matthew, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come when the time comes. Say that with me. When the time comes. We need to hear that. I don't know if I can handle when my spouse dies. I don't know what I'm going to do. You will know when the time comes. My kids are about to leave the house and go to college, and, and it'll just be me and my husband, and I don't know what we're going to do. You'll know when the time comes. I have that meeting next week, and I'm so afraid of that problem, and I don't know what I'm going to do. You will know from God when the time comes. Letting go of your baggage means trusting God with burdens you're not supposed to carry. God's got this. Two irrefutable facts I've learned in seminary are this. Here they are. There is a God and I am not him. God's got this. Now, a guy was on an African safari, and the guide had a machete and was, you know, cutting the path in front of them. 
And the guy on the trip was getting hot, he was getting frustrated, he thought they were lost. And he said, where are we going? Do you know where we're going? Where's the path? I'm tired, I'm ready to stop. And finally the guy looked back at him and said, I'm the path, I'm the way. So often in life we do the same thing to God, don't we? God, where is the path? Where are you taking me? I feel lost. Where am I? And God may give us a sign here and there, but he doesn't give us all of it because we can't handle it. We don't know. But what he does is he gives us the greatest gift. He gives us himself. Let me give you a verse from 1 Peter that can help you throw away this baggage you have. You can throw the whole weight of your anxieties upon him, for you are his personal concern. And I love that verse because the word throw in the Greek literally means chuck it. Like these kids were chucking that stuff. That's a perfect illustration, just chucking the paper. That's what God says in the Bible we need to do with our cares and concerns and our baggage. Just chuck it to God. Doesn't mean we just stand back and do nothing. Obedience is our responsibility, but give it to God. And if you still have a problem with doing that, well, here's what I want you to do today. Here's your homework. Sometime today, this is easy, sometime today, write on your bulletin in the sermon notes the baggage you've been thinking about this entire sermon, because I know you have. Write it down. Crumple it up, throw it in the trash, and say, I give it to you, God. And if you still have a problem with doing that, I want you to hear these words from a beautiful song by Babby Mason called Trust His Heart. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. But listen, God is too wise to be mistaken too good to be unkind. When you don't understand, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. We need to do that. It's time to let it go. Haven't you been holding on to it long enough? God's got this. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, I pray for each and every soul in this worship service. Oh, I know they, they may be all cleaned up and smile on their best, but inside they feel weighted down. They're hurt. They're exhausted because they've been carrying around baggage way too long. Oh, Lord, teach us to just let it go. Give us the grace and the courage to release it and find that peace and joy you so desperately want us to have and be free of the obsession and the all-consuming thoughts. Just, Lord, we let it go to you by your grace. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.